The Arcadia Empire is a kingdom known for its famously corrupt rulers and extreme lines of defense, to keep the city at peace from anyone who may want to stop the ones who rule there. It all started five years ago, and we see the humans who lived in the country created heavily armored suits equipped with several different weapons to face any army or organizations who may want to challenge them and overthrow the city. No one could ever stop them, however, one night, on a full moon, a dark drag knight who is wearing the black suited armor came and stopped the tyranny once and for all, and he was known as the black black hero. He was extremely overpowered and he alone, solely took over and crushed the other mechs, slamming them into the walls of the empire and burning buildings to the ground. From the top of the tower, the fight was being observed by a girl and once the fighting was over, she heard footsteps behind her who was a silver-haired boy named Lux, who happens to be the prince of the empire and he starts walking slowly towards her with a dark aura surrounding him, and is grinning while approaching the girl who is scared out of her mind. He tells her to pick up his sword immediately and she does it right away. And until this day, the identity of this powerful dark drag knight is still a mystery to the rest of the world. But everyone who lived in the Arcadia Empire and witnessed these events still tell the story of what happened that night, out of respect to the dark drag knight, or the black hero, who saved the country from the endless tyranny. However, nobody knows what happened after the city fell, as the black hero disappeared and the empire was taken over once again by others and he was nowhere to be seen. The story then takes us five years later, and the new rulers have renamed the empire to the kingdom of Adismata, and here, we see a boy running across the rooftops and he falls into the girl's dormitory, right on top of some juicy plot armor. And the boy can't help himself and overreacts, calling the girl a cutie, and the most breathtaking woman he's ever seen in his life, he done this so he wouldn't provoke her or make her upset. However he was wrong, as she screams so loudly and calls Lux a pathetic worthless loser, and to get out of here immediately, and orders the guards for his arrest. Later on, we see Lux all chained up in a cell in the dungeons below the fortress of the Empire, and has been tied up here for the entire day. He appears to be weak and tired, and tries calling out to anyone in the fortress as he's dying of thirst. And here, a woman comes along called Krulsifer, a beautiful blue-haired girl, and Lux tries explaining to her that this is all one big misunderstanding, and that he was only chasing a cat who had stolen a woman's purse. So he was chasing the cat who happened to run across the dormitory roofs and he fell through and landed on top of the girls. However, Krulsifer didn't care about his silly excuses and doesn't even believe a word he's saying. She thinks he was trying to spy on all the beautiful girls and calls him a smelly little peasant who can't take her as some kind of fool. She then proceeds to ask Lux why he was carrying two of these sword devices, as it's extremely uncommon to see someone using two swords at a time, and adds that the black sword looks different to anything she's ever seen before as it wasn't forged in this current empire, and it's made with a rare black steel, engraved with gems and diamonds. Right then, Lux told her that she shouldn't be touching such a sword, and that's when another girl appears, called Sharis, and explains to Krulsifer that she shouldn't be down here talking to the prisoner. And after, she informs Lux that the headmaster would like to talk with him now, so they all head over to the principal office while dragging Lux along with them. When they reach the headmaster's office, Lux is greeted by the headmaster and Lux realizes that the new empire has been turned into some sort of academy and the headmistress actually knows who this kid is. And right after she tells the other girls that this is a boy named Lux, the previous prince of the Arcadia Empire, but due to a coup dead at, the last empire was overthrown and calls him a failure. The girls say that he was observing them, but the headmaster said she knows exactly who he is, and calls him a scared little boy who would never even dare peeping at a girl, even if she asked them to. After, she asks Lux if he knows what this place has become now, and after connecting a few dots he understands that this is actually an all-girls academy run by the new empire called Adismata. She tells him that due to the previous war five years ago, they lost all the greatest male drag knights, and this is because Lux killed most of them, and now the only one left is Lux and a few others after the battle. She seems to know that Lux was the dark drag knight, or known as the black hero, but she keeps this a secret from the rest of the girls for now. The headmaster explains to Lux that despite losing the best male drag knights, these girls seem to have a natural aptitude for riding the mechanized dragons and that their goal is to train them and she wants Lux to work here as their teacher. After hearing this, Lux is shocked as he's the only boy in the whole academy, and this conversation was being overheard by all the other students. And one of them is a girl called Lisa Adismata, the princess of the current empire. And she doesn't approve for Lux to work here as she was the girl who he landed on. And she gets super angry at him screaming the place down and furiously asks to challenge Lux in a 1v1 duel match. She said if he wins he can work at the school but if not, he will have to lay down his arms and apologize and accept defeat and will be their prisoner forever. The headmistress tells Lux that she's not a part of this and his punishment is in the hands of the princess so he must accept the duel. 
All the other girls get excited as Lisa Adesmata is known as the strongest student, and they can't wait to see her beat a boy and humiliate him. But the headmaster tells them that they shouldn't get too excited, as Lux is famous for winning the Imperial Tournament from the Last Empire, and was even given the nickname the weakest undefeated champion, which makes Lux laugh as he's actually a godlike dark dragon knight but nobody knows it. After, the Princess Leisha tells everyone to inform the rest of the kingdom that the Princess of Atismata Empire will be dueling Lux the previous Prince of the Arcadia Empire, and Lux is shocked after finding out that she is the current Princess of the new Empire that overthrew him. Later that day, Lux meets with his sister Eri, who is disappointed in his low-risk game leading to many borderline harassment claims on his head. Likewise, Eri's friend, Nokuto, refuses to sit as she wants to apply max caution towards Lux. Eri fears that Lux might be arrested for being a creep and she would have to pay their debt. Apparently, the former royal family are considered criminals hence they have to pay fines to gain privileges equal to that of an average Atismata Empire citizen. Hence, his sister wants Lux to win the battle against Leisha who has an undefeated track record like him. Lux, who was known as the weakest yet undefeated, agrees to fulfill his sister's desire. The next day, Lux enters the stage for his fight against Leisha. A stadium full of students are hyped as royals from the past and present would clash. Leisha asks Lux if he knew the reason for the duel that she had initiated. Seeing that he was clueless, Leisha promises to reveal the reason if he won the fight. Lux unsheathed his sword, and equipped himself with a wyvern whereas Leisha equipped herself with a far more powerful divine drag ride called Tiamat. Opposed to Lux's wyvern, Tiamat has a more advanced set of controls. Seeing he was outmatched, Lux tries to evade all the shots from the get-go, and focuses all on his defense. Leisha quickly picks up that he was trying to tie by wasting the match time, so she sends some drones followed by a beam. The sword equipped by the wyvern breaks as Lux tries to defend Leisha's shot. Leisha then summons a machine gun all while urging Lux to use the other black sword which looked much stronger. For some reason, Lux does not want to summon the sword, which angers Leisha as she did not want to be undermined. Despite seeing his brother's dire state, Eri is certain that his brother is stubborn when he sets off on a goal and does not easily bend his back for others. Hence, his brother can win the duel with sheer willpower. As Eri had speculated, Lux began to dodge all shots making Leisha agitated and leading her to use a special ability granted to the divine drag rides only. The ability pulls Lux to the ground, making him realize that Tiamat's special ability was gravitational control. Immediately after the attack, Leisha is evidently tired and soon loses control over Tiamat. Somewhere else, a suspicious person blows on a horn whistle, which breaks the barriers around the dueling grounds while simultaneously summoning a monster called Abyss. Upon the arrival of Abyss, everyone was evacuated to safety whilst Lux decided to charge and fight with the monster. Using Leisha's help, Lux formulated the plan to become the bait as Leisha would use her cannon to one-shot the monster on Lux's signal. Charging in, Lux risked his life in order to position Abyss in the perfect position for the concentrated shot by Leisha which landed successfully. As the monster died, Lux unconscious in his wyvern, came crashing down and he was rushed to a spare room within the academy. The next day, Lux dreams about his past where he remembers his half-brother, Fugil, asking if Lux with his wyvern would cooperate with him with his Bahamut. Lux awakens from his unconsciousness only to find himself on a resting bed. To reward Lux for protecting her, Leisha decided to aid Lux in return as she kept on checking on Lux throughout the day. Leisha finds Lux more modest than his royal Arcadia family so Lux tells Leisha that he was forced out of the imperial court hence he is not like the previous oppressive leaders of Arcadia. As she had previously promised, Leisha then also informs Lux the reason for the duel she had initiated. While showing him the crest near her navel, Leisha tells Lux that she wanted to fight him because he had previously seen her in the bath so she wanted to know if Lux would keep it a secret. The crest was of the old empire Arcadia, but Leisha is hesitant to explain any further. Likewise, when asked about the black sword device, Lux also does not reveal much as he wanted to keep it a secret. As they get to know each other on better terms, Leisha allows Lux to stay as a cadet instead of the previous offer of working at the academy, which makes him extremely surprised yet thankful. The next day, Lux enrolls as a cadet and joins a class for training. After introducing himself to the class teacher and fellow classmates, Lux sits next to his old childhood friend Philophy, who had grown a lot of fanservice than when he last saw her seven years ago. Seated nearby, Leisha grows envious as she wanted to hog Lux all for herself, but another competitor had arrived taking away his attention. At the end of the class, many students get to know that Lux was also offering services for menial jobs. Many girls ask him to put his plumbing skills to the test and Tilfar hands out sheets of paper to those who wanted to get services by Lux. Leisha asks Lux if she could become his private escort. Seeing Lux ganged on by a mob of females, Philophy tries to intervene but Leisha hands her a donut to eat instead. 
Crulcifer arrives on the scene and reminds Lux about the job that the headmistress had offered him previously. After taking Lux to safety, Crulcifer tells him that she had cooked up an excuse for him to escape. As a repayment, she asks Lux to be on the lookout for the Black Drag Ride Knight, aka the Black Hero, as she had some business with him. Later, while asleep, Lux once again dreams of his past where Fugil tells him that Philophy would soon be part of a human experimentation by the Arcadia Empire. He wakes up only to find himself next to half-naked Philophy, who especially got buffed after her donut-eating spree. Tilfar, who is passing by, spreads gossip of the unholy sight to everyone in school. At lunch break, Aerie lectures Lux once again about his fetishes and leaves in disgust. Later that day, Lux heads to Leisha's workshop as she had previously sent in a work request for Lux. Heading there, Leisha shows Lux his wyvern, repaired by none other than her. She wanted to do this much as Lux was part of the Chivalric Order of the school. The Chivalric Order was a special forces unit made up of cadets whose skills are admired. Lux vows to help Leisha in forming the better empire of Atismata from the remains of the failed empire of Arcadia. As the formal celebration for the Chivalric Order would be held after some time, Leisha, as his private escort, takes Lux to a stroll so that they bond with each other as fellow Chivalric Order members. They reach an expensive restaurant and Leisha tries to head in. Giga Chad Lux knew that he would be left with the bill and asks Leisha to do the finances for their meal. Flustered, Leisha suddenly tries to act all innocent by putting up a performance of finding her wallet. Knowing that that bimbo blondie would rather die than offer her wallet, Lux being a Sigma male offers her a pastry from a bakery nearby. Later that day, Leisha trauma dumps on Lux and tells him about how she was captured five years ago by the old empire and was branded the crest on her stomach. Her father, who was busy with the coup d'etat, did not save her and abandoned her. She feels that she is not befitting of becoming the queen as back then. Her selfish self wanted her father to sacrifice the country to save her. However, being the only surviving member of the Atismata family, she has no choice but to become queen. Alone at night, Lux empathizes with Leisha because he was not prince-like either. He falls asleep and remembers the past where his brother Fugil had killed many people against Lux's suggestion. His brother maniacally laughed as he killed people effortlessly without using the horn whistle to summon multiple abyss. Suddenly, Lux awakens by the sound of a bell ringing nearby. Lux rushes outside where he finds his school teacher giving orders to the cadets about an attack by abyss close by. Being the member of the Chivalric Order, Leisha along with a few others head to the scene whereas Krulsifer instructs Lux to stay at the academy because he had not yet officially joined the Chivalric Order. Philophy, who is also at the academy, informs Lux about the sound of a horn whistle. Meanwhile, Leisha, who had now approached the abyss, hears the sound of the whistle which causes many abyss to emerge from the slime below. A traitor from the ranks of the Atismata Empire joins the side of the abyss horde. He reveals himself to be Regreed Forrest, the Chivalric Order captain of the guard from the previous Arcadia Empire. Regreed blows on the horn whistle which causes the Horde of Abyss to attack the counter-force team from the Atismata Empire. Nokuto rushes back to the academy to give a status report about the situation. Learning that the team was in a dire situation, Lux decides to head out to help. Battling against the Abyss Horde, Leisha soon realizes that the sheer number of them was too much to control. While she was occupied with the Abyss Horde, Regreed smashes Leisha to the ground. Furthermore, a rebel army of the old empire heads on the scene, increasing the enemy numbers manyfold. Piloting his wyvern, Lux reaches the battlefield where he finds Regreed ripping Leisha's armor, revealing the crest on her stomach. Amused, Regreed tells Leisha that he was the one that burned the crest on her. Refusing to be assaulted once again, Leisha throws her sword towards Regreed, which scrapes his cheek. Enraged, Regreed tries to finish Leisha but Lux comes to her rescue and pushes away Regreed. However, Wyvern is damaged in the process, so he unsheathes his black sword. To everyone's surprise, he summons the Bahama, which was the black drag ride from the coup d'etat from five years ago. Harlcifer, who was watching from afar, realizes that Lux is none other than the black hero she was looking for. Using the Bahama, Lux finishes the enemy forces as if they were mosquitoes. Regreed, who now knew that Lux was a prince of the previous Arcadia Empire, demands to know why Lux has turned traitor to his empire. However, Lux does not entertain him any longer and incinerates his drag ride to dust, making him the victor of the fight. The next day, a party is held by the Academy for Lux's feats. Lux realizes that he is in Ha-Rem heaven when all of the girls begin to lust over him. However, Sania, along with a group of girls, is still cautious of Lux due to his relations with the previous empire. To make things spicy, Headmistress Ryuri initiates a competition where the girls of the Academy will try to take a special request form that is in hands of Lux. As a reward, Lux for a week will become enslaved to the person who takes the form from him. Lux, who had one hour's time to hide and evade the girls, rushed outside for his life as many girls wanted to pounce on him. Offering him protection, Leisha takes Lux to her warehouse. While he was distracted, Leisha 
swoops Lux with her drag ride and tries to trap him into giving the form. As Lux was trapped, Leisha begins to have impure thoughts so Lux agrees to be her slave if she frees him. Successfully fooling her into freeing him, Lux sprints at the first chance to escape. Later, Lux hides near a bush but soon finds that Philophy has followed him. Bribed with cake by Leisha, hungry Philophy tackles Lux. Before she could grab the form that fell to the ground, Lux swiftly grabs the form and runs away. With 10 minutes left of the competition, Lux hides in the Academy's changing room. The anime lords bless him once again as a squad of girls head to change clothes. Crolsifer decides to pick out a book from the shelves in front, and notices Degenerate Lux scanning her for research purposes. Crolsifer decides to send off the other girls so that they do not see Lux. When the coast was clear, Crolsifer instructed him to show himself. Realizing that the competition time was over, Lux hands the form to Crolsifer, only to realize that she was ten steps ahead of him. Apparently, Crolsifer had made it seem that the clock was a few minutes ahead than the actual time. Hence she was able to retrieve Lux's form while making him believe that the competition time was over when it was not. Lux falls in anguish, and Crolsifer breathlessly whispers about her order to make him her boyfriend. Later that day, Headmistress Riri calls for Eri and Lux. Headmistress Riri shows the two of them the horn whistle which she had recovered from Regreed in the fight before. She speculates that the whistle is obtained from the depths of the ruins hence she will soon send the chivalric order to investigate whether the whistle was a key to the ruins or not. After the meeting, Eri, who was suspicious of Crolsifer, wishes Lux well for his boyfriend role with Crolsifer as she was a transfer student from the nation called Ymir. Eri feels that Crolsifer is hiding something. The next day, Lux meets with Crolsifer, who tells him that she was indeed a transfer student, and the daughter of a count from the theocratic country of Ymir. She had arrived in Adismata because her family, Einfolk, wanted her to look for a potential high-ranking suitor to gain political benefits for her country. For this very reason, in a few days, a butler from her family would check up on the progress of Crolsifer's suitor search. However, she was currently unwilling to marry as she had a goal to fulfill before marriage. Hence, she wants Lux to play the role of her boyfriend to stall the butler from making an announcement of her marriage. She threatens to reveal Lux's recent peeping Tom spree if he did not play the role of boyfriend. Nearby, Leisha grows bitter to see Lux as Crolsifer's leashed dog. At night, Crolsifer helps Lux with his homework when Leisha storms in followed by Philophy and Tilfar. To make Crolsifer jealous, Leisha reveals that she had held hands with Lux before. Having no knowledge of the birds and the bees, Leisha believes that Lux and her relationship is escalating rapidly and they only need to kiss to have babies. The group tries to preserve her pure mind, and Lux decides to go to bed for his date with Crolsifer the next day. The next day, Crolsifer takes Lux to a clothes shop. Philophy and Leisha decide to tail the two in secret. She orders some custom clothes for Lux, who is grateful to Crolsifer for going this far unlike the skank Leisha who did not spend a dime on him. Crolsifer decides to treat Lux at a restaurant as well. En route, the two of them are ambushed by random enemies that threaten them to comply. To avoid kidnap, Lux distracts the two people in front of him, whereas Crolsifer uses her sword device to summon her divine drag ride called Fafnir. She shields Lux from oncoming gunfire and then uses Weissblood, which allows her to foresee the moves of the enemies. With foresight, she accurately shoots down the drag rides of the enemies. Leisha and Philophy come to help Lux, who is surprised that the two of them were following him. During their chit-chat, one of the enemies tries to escape but is stopped by Alterize, who was Crolsifer's butler. After everything calmed down, all five of them stopped at a nearby restaurant. Crolsifer introduces Lux to Alterize, who is a bit disappointed in Crolsifer's choice. At the same time, Lord Balzaride Kreutzer heads to their table to meet her future wife, Crolsifer. Alterize had previously set a suitor meeting for Crolsifer and him that was to take place tomorrow. Crolsifer shows no interest and informs him that she is currently dating Lux, and Lux also plays the part as previously promised. The Kreutzer family was one of the families that was closest to the Empire since it was Arcadia. Hence Balzaride decides to point out his higher class compared to Lux, who was a mere fallen prince. He sets up a duel of drag rides and promises to leave if he loses. However, if he won, Crolsifer was to force herself to marry Balzaride. Crolsifer sets the duel in pairs and pairs herself with Lux while pairing Alterize with Balzaride. With the duel set to take place after the next three days, Balzaride, sure of his victory, laughs while taking his leave. The following night, Balzaride meets up with Hayes via Arcadia, who has the whistle horn that Balzaride believes is the key to the ruins. However, Hayes corrects him and tells him that Crolsifer was actually the key to the ruins. Vowing to marry Crolsifer as she was the key, Balzaride laughs as he slowly makes steps to reach his goal of becoming the next king of the Atismata Empire. The next day, at the Night Academy, Crolsifer thanks Lux big time as he had flawlessly played the part of boyfriend yesterday. 
Leisha, who overhears them, is relieved to know that Krulsifer and Lux were pretend couples, meaning that she still had a chance to hook up with Lux. Ecstatic, Leisha, being a gold digger, even offers to insert a drill in Lux's wyvern for the upcoming duel with Balsaride. Since he was sleep-deprived, Lux heads to a place to rest but finds Tilfar on his way, who takes him into a room full of surprises. There he finds Leisha and Philophy dressed as maids. As the buttons held on to dear life, the maid girls begin to give Master Lux the full Sin City experience, starting with a huge buffet. Meanwhile, somewhere else, a castle conference is held in the Adismata Castle. The queen and the four great nobles gather in the meeting to discuss a serious matter. In each ruin, there exists a unique powerful abyss known as the Ragnaroks. One of the Ragnaroks, called Poseidon, is trying to resurrect from its fossilized state, making it an immediate matter of concern. Before it could awaken, the nobles decide to avert the crisis by preparing themselves for the awakening. Ward Kreutzer, one of the great four nobles, hands his son, Balsaride, the job of investigating the ruins in an attempt to find the strong weapons that could be used to fight Poseidon. At the Night Academy, Ryuri also gathers the cadets to announce the investigations that she had planned earlier in order to reach the depths of the ruins using the horn whistle as a key. Furthermore, Ryuri entrusts Lux with the horn whistle. Lux notices Krulsifer at the meeting, and later meets her when it's concluded. Krulsifer tells him that she would be joining in the mission despite being a transfer student. Krulsifer explains that the mission is a chance that she could fulfill her goal, which Lux still does not know. Later, Lux heads to a bath to relax before the upcoming expedition to the ruin. However, as usual, Lux finds undressed Philophy right to him. Lux goes crazy and starts to leave but Philophy asks him to calm his pants because they are childhood friends. Lux makes eye contact with Philophy's Tilly Billy before remembering the harassment claims on his head. Out of fear, he starts to leave but soon realizes that Philophy is beginning to fall asleep. Hence he tries to lift her out of the water. While lifting her up, Lux notices that a scar on Philophy's back had disappeared. In the past she had gotten one, however, Philophy does not remember any such scar whereas Lux vividly remembers it. While confused, Lux soon realizes that he was falling unconscious because all of his blood had gone to his wood. The next day, the cadets all gather while the class teacher informs them of the objective of their trip to the ruin. However, Krulsifer, Leisha and Lux are soon shocked to find that Balsaride will be a special participant in their investigation. As Leisha is angered by his arrival, he announces that he will protect the team from danger, and will not have any other role. Later, all of them head to the ruin in their drag rides. As they approached closer, they encountered an abyss called Diablo. The abyss rushes towards Nokudo, but Lux protects her. Balsaride shots towards the abyss but it flies away while all the other cadets open fire at it. Krulsifer, with the help of her divine drag ride, uses the divine ability of Weissblood and accurately freezes the Abyss's hand. Balsaride, using his divine drag ride, shoots at the Diablo. With the display of his incredible power, Balsaride challenges Lux to an Abyss-killing race. If Lux killed more Abyss than him, he would call off the duel that was to be held tomorrow. Nearby, the Diablo once again tries to strike them. Krulsifer tries to subdue it using Weissblood, but she is not able to foresee the Diablo's movements accurately. The Diablo directs his fire breath towards her, but Lux saves her in time. Balsaride summons a large axe and hurls it towards the Diablo, successfully striking its chest. Balsaride taunts Lux as he was clearly better at fighting against the Abyss, and would most likely win the race. Unfocused, Krulsifer starts to lose confidence as her Weissblood, for unknown reasons, was not working as she had intended. Suddenly, Leisha immediately orders everyone to take cover as the Abyss begins to explode. Everyone erects a barrier but Lux notices that Krulsifer's Farfnir was losing control. Furthermore, the ruin starts to shine and open. In a spur-of-a-moment decision, Lux protects Krulsifer with his wyvern as the explosion engulfed him, taking Krulsifer and him into the ruins. With the impact, Lux begins to have a flashback where Fugil had come to check up on him after he had used a new explosive technique while using Fugil's drag ride, the Bahamut. After coming to his senses, Lux realizes that he is in an unknown place. Krulsifer tells him that they had entered inside the ruin hence they should be cautious. They begin to head to the altar at the center of the ruin as Krulsifer believed that everyone else would be present there. On their way, Krulsifer begins to get exhausted from the battle before and struggles to walk. Lux suggests that they rest but Krulsifer once again talks about her goal and the few chances she had to fulfill it. Hence, Lux offers her help and shoulders her weight. While shouldering her, Lux asks Krulsifer the reason she was looking for the black hero, who actually was Lux. She reveals that no matter the driver, a drag ride has a limit to how long it can be continuously driven. 
However, the Black Hero seems to be an outlier to such a case hence she believes that the Black Hero and she are the same and would like to meet him. At the moment, she does not remember that Lux was the Black Hero. Reaching the altar, Krulsifer believes that they are the first ones to arrive as no one else was there. Realizing that they needed a key to access the depths of the ruins, Lux tries to use the horn whistle that was handed to him, but soon realizes that the altar glowed by Krulsifer's presence alone. Krulsifer then reveals the secret that she had kept from everyone the whole time. As a passage opens after recognizing the key, Krulsifer reveals that she wasn't from the Einfolk family, or how she wasn't even from the human world for that matter. She was in fact the last survivor of the ruins, hence making her the key to the ruins. After gaining access to the passageway, the walls begin to break so Lux immediately takes Krulsifer to the now open passage. After entering inside, the collapsing rubble blocks the entrance, trapping them within the passage from the altar. Krulsifer heads on ahead, and informs Lux that she was just a child when she was found inside a capsule that was like the one that she had just found. To further elaborate, Krulsifer reveals that she had been adopted by the Einfolk family but since she was a ruined survivor, everyone, including the Einfolks, used to distance themselves from her. To gain love from her siblings, she had put in a lot of effort to become a drag knight but still she got neglected by her siblings since she was related to the ruins. Having no recollection of her past, she makes it her goal to investigate the ruin to find any past accomplices. However, she feels even more sad after finding there were no accomplices inside the ruin. Feeling depressed, Krulsifer calls herself useless but my boy Lux immediately springs into action as he holds her delicate hands and, like a gentleman, tells her that she was important to him since she was his number one waifu. As the cringy Ness sinked in, Krulsifer tries to ease the tension by jokingly calling the whole story a hoax which embarrasses Lux. Intrigued by Lux's gullible and kind behavior, Krulsifer asks Lux about why he is such a soft heart and kind to others even though he was the prince of the infamous old empire. To answer Krulsifer's question, Lux looks back at his cruel past where he and his mother were kicked out of the imperial court by his father because Lux's grandfather had criticized his policy. Policies. Since they were kicked out, the people of the old empire and the royalty both didn't lend them aid which eventually resulted in Lux's mother's tragic death. After seeing his mother die in his own hands, Lux had grown to resent everyone around him but his anger was navigated into kindness by Philophy, who had come to help Lux in his darkest times. Touched by Lux's dark past and how he channeled his anger, Krulsifer asks Lux if he would help her if he were to become the prince of the new empire but before Lux could answer, Leisha pops out nowhere using her drag ride with a drill installed on it, proving that the drill was somewhat useful. Right after interrupting them, Leisha blushes as she tells Lux that he had better not kicked it off with Krulsifer while they both were alone. Being too innocent for this world, Lux doesn't understand Leisha's lewd terms which embarrasses Leisha even more. The next day, Lux meets with his sister, Aerie, who scolds him for being too reckless. After the scolding, Aerie hands a herbal tea to Lux and tells him to rest as he has an upcoming duel with Balsaride. As the time for the duel approaches, it is revealed that the herbal tea was drugged as the time of the duel had approached but Lux was still fast asleep. Apparently, Krulsifer didn't want Lux to get dragged in once again because of her and hence she used the special form from before and forced Aerie to drug him for her sake as she decided to head up for the duel alone. Upon reaching the agreed location, Balsaride asks about Lux but Krulsifer shuts him down and tells him to initiate the duel without him. To make it fair, Balsaride tells his butler, Alterize, to rest as he uses his powers on Alterize which causes her to collapse. Without wasting any more time, they both engage in a fierce duel as they both begin clashing swords. After a while, Balsaride baits Krulsifer and after coming in contact with her, he momentarily uses his powers once again and he immediately lets go. After using his powers, Balsaride seems much more powerful as he is able to dodge Krulsifer's attacks even after she was using her foresight ability. Overpowering Krulsifer, Balsaride finally is able to knock her to the ground and forces her to leave her drag ride, Fafnir. Seeing Krulsifer helpless, Balsaride reveals that she was nothing more than a key to the ruins to him but before he could continue any further, Lux appears in the Black Hero drag ride revealing his Black Hero form to Krulsifer. To protect his supposed girlfriend, Lux hastes to attack Balsaride and after clashing swords once, Lux immediately knows Balsaride's divine drag ride's true power which was to suck other divine drag ride's powers as he was using Krulsifer. Balsifer's powers which he had sucked previously to foresee the future. Impressed by Lux's sharp eye, Balsaride immediately uses Krulsifer as bait as he shoots towards her which forces Lux to come to the ground and protect her, giving him an opportunity to suck the Black Hero's power. After inheriting the power of the Black Hero, Balsaride uses the OP power of the Black Hero, and he starts to overpower Lux. After defending himself, Lux starts to exhaust from using his energy defending himself from his own attacks which were used by Balsaride. 
seeing Lux starting to lose to Balsaride, Krulsifer begins to tear up after seeing Lux sacrifice so much for her. After spotting teardrops falling from Krulsifer's cheeks, Lux gains a massive buff as he decides to win at any cost for his girlfriend. To end the duel once and for all, Lux, using his out-of-the-roof power buff, uses his abnormally strong attack and he sends off Balsaride straight to Jesus. The next day, Lux meets up with Alterize and Krulsifer in a cafe which causes Leisha who was jealous of Krulsifer, to spy on them. Since Lux had defeated Krulsifer's fiancé, Alterize announced him as Krulsifer's new fiancé, which catches Lux totally off guard. To clear up the misunderstanding, Lux tries to correct Alterize but she doesn't listen to him and leaves them alone to spend some time together. With the two of them alone, Krulsifer tells Lux to calm down and she immediately begins to commend Lux's aggressiveness which he showed the other day. To reward Lux for being the coolest boyfriend, Krulsifer proceeds to kiss Lux which sends Lux to another world since him kissing a girl was an impossibility which had come true. Spying from nearby, Leisha storms inside the cafe as she isn't able to handle Krulsifer asking Lux to marry her if he wanted kisses like that. A few days later, news of a maniac in robes spreads throughout the academy followed by the news of the strongest knight, Celestia Ralgris, coming back to the academy. Since Celestia was a man-hater, Lux is forced to dress up in a girl's uniform and he is sent off to scout the area wearing the uniform. Making his way through the academy, no one is able to identify Lux through the girly disguise as his voice was pretty girly naturally. After scouting the area for a while, Lux decides to rest on a bench but he immediately gets distracted by a faint voice of someone talking inside the bushes. On a closer inspection, Lux spots a blonde-haired girl talking to a cat about something. Whilst he was hearing the crazy woman talk to a cat, a shady man appears behind Lux and he tries to slice him up. Due to Lux's scream, the crazy blonde girl springs into action as she stands in front of Lux and tells the shady man to back away. Seeing that reinforcement had come, the shady guy uses a smoke bomb to escape and he throws a dagger at the blonde girl before leaving. To protect the blonde girl, Lux jumps in front of the girl and he gets a minor wound by the dagger. Later, to tend the wound, the blonde girl takes Lux to the medical room where she tells Lux to open up his shirt so that she can apply a bandage. Scared that his cover would be busted, Lux tells her to open his shirt and apply the bandage while he is facing his back towards her. After getting his wound tended, Lux decides to take his leave but before leaving, the blonde asks Lux Lux his name and since Lux was pretending to be a girl, he tells her that his name was Luno. After hearing Lux's female name, the blonde girl reveals that she was none other than the strongest knight, Celestia Ralgris, and she suggested they should meet together more oftenly. The next day, Lux is pounced over by Krulsifer and Leisha who both want Lux to be theirs. Cornered, Lux tries to avoid the attention their cat fight was gathering. That night, somewhere else, Hayes heads to Balsaride's jail cell as Balsaride had somehow managed to survive the attack from Lux and he was now in captivity. Assuming that he was being rescued, Balsaride thanks Hayes for sneaking inside. However, Hayes soon shows her evil intentions as she turns Balsaride into an abyss for losing against Lux Arcadia. From the adjacent cell, Regreed watches in horror as Balsaride turns into an abomination. Back at the academy, Lux prepares himself to face Celestia without any disguise. However, Tilfar knocks at his door and informs him about Celestia's meeting with the headmistress. The two of them rush to the headmistress, where Lux finds Celestia who does not recognize him to be Luno, demanding for his expulsion. Leisha is enraged by Celestia's misandrous views and instead advocates to keep Lux at the academy. As Lux arrives at the meeting, Celestia thanks him for the help he had offered in her absence. However, she believes that it was high time that Lux left the academy because enrolling a male at an all-girls academy was a violation of a policy. Lux asks Celestia if he could at least help in defeating the Ragnarok Poseidon. Believing that she was sufficient, Celestia refuses Lux's help. Seeing Lux and Celestia arguing, the headmistress suggests they have a duel where the victor would be the one deciding. Believing duels to be the only way to reach a settlement, Celestia and Lux agree to duel after the training session at Ray's Island. Later that day, Sanya, the black girl from before, knocks at Celestia's door and asks what she'll do with Lux. Reassuring Sanya, Celestia tells Sanya that she'll make sure she keeps Lux away from the school since it was for his own good. Time skip to when they all reach Re Island, everyone immediately gets to training as Celestia was the instructor and she was strict with training. After the exhausting training, Lux meets up with Sharis as he wanted to get into the Luno disguise since he had brought the disguise with him all the way to Re Island. Before he could swap his gender once again, he is interrupted by Sharis who tells him that Celestia was calling him. Upon reaching Celestia's room, Lux finds Celestia who was underdressed and was waiting for a massage. Being a cultured gentleman, Lux immediately gets on the bed beside Celestia and he begins to massage her. After the massage, Celestia tells Lux to open the lamp since she wanted to get dressed up. 
Panicking, Lux immediately wears the girl uniform he brought with him and he quickly disguises as Luno. Seeing Luno had been massaging her the whole time, Celestia is overjoyed and she invites Luno to meet up at a park tomorrow. After accepting her invite, Lux hurries outside the room only to find himself against Sania who starts to draw her sword out since she hadn't seen Luno before. To save Lux from Sania, Krulsifer, who was nearby, cooks up a cover for Lux and tells Sania that Luna was with her. After things settle down, Lux gets to sleep but his sleep is disturbed by Philophy who appears inside his room in the middle of the night with a night dress on. Weirded out by Philophy's sudden appearance, Lux tells Philophy that she was in the wrong room and that the girl's dorm was elsewhere. Ignoring Lux's words, Philophy hugs Lux and tells him that she would not let Celestia kick him out of the academy which warms Lux's heart too since they always had each other's backs. The next day, Lux disguises as Luno and meets up with Celestia who takes him to a girl's swimming clothes store. Scared that his disguise will be blown, Lux rushes out of the store which makes Celestia believe that she wasn't a good senior since she wasn't considerate about his feelings. To assure Celestia that she was an inspiration to juniors, Lux reassures Celestia and tells her that she was a senior to whom the juniors could look up to. Happy, Celestia hugs Lux and takes him to a park nearby to eat biscuits together. As they both began bonding together, Celestia shortly after revealed the main misconception that people had of her which was that she was a man-hater. Hearing Celestia say that she didn't hate men, Lux screams in his mind since he was amongst the ones who believed her to be a true man-hater and he now knew that he was so wrong about her. The next day, the patrol team working for the Atismata castle learns that the fossilized Poseidon had awakened, and had already escaped into deep waters. Oblivious to the escape of Poseidon, the knights carry on with their activities at the Ray's Island nearby. Celestia and Sania change into their swimwear for the swimming practice that was about to take place. While changing, Celestia tells Sania that the real reason she wants to expel Lux is because she is shy of the opposite gender. She is not really a man-hater as Sania had made her out to be, but she also knows that she cannot fall in love with men because she has to bear the responsibility of being the eldest daughter of Distralgris, who is one of the four great nobles. At the beach, Lux gets to see a feast of eye candy as all of his waifus wear swimsuits. However, nothing is comparable to best girl Philophy, who teases Lux by throwing cold water on him. Lux runs away only to meet Leisha, who was a little concerned about her crest that was showing. Lux tries to comfort her but she takes it as harassment talk about her being a typical Tsun the Rei. Celestia and Sania soon join the cadets but complain to Ryuri after they soon realize that they were not training or anything. Headmistress Ryuri points out that Celestia herself was not wearing training clothes. Celestia, who had now remembered that Luno had suggested her that bikini, tries to look for Luno at the beach. However, Headmistress Ryuri does not know anyone by that name. Seeing that his cover was being publicly blown, Lux is dragged into the forest by Tilfar, Nokuto and Sheris, who hand him a pair of female undergarments all while instructing him to play Luno. Refusing to ever wear female undergarments, Lux runs away only to bump into Celestia who is evidently pissed off by his clumsiness. Celestia and Sania head back to the camp all disappointed after not being able to proceed with the group training. As Celestia left, Lux remembers the conservation he had with her the previous day while he was disguised as Luno. In that conversation, Celestia had shared her desire to apologize to Lux as she was trained by Lux's grandfather, Wade Roadbelt, whose death she believes was her fault. Hence, she wants to keep Lux away from any complications that may tie him with her, consequently repeating the incident that she had previously gone through. However, Lux personally feels that he needs to stay at the academy, and thus decides to give it his all against Celestia at the duel tomorrow. Outside the camps of the cadets, the cloaked maniac and Hayes meet with each other to discuss their plan for tomorrow. The next day, Lux and Celestia head to the dueling grounds for their scheduled fight. Celestia, with her divine drag ride, Lindworm, stands before Lux, with his wyvern, Airy tells Nokuto that Lux was trying to keep Bahamut a secret to some of the Chivalric Order members that were still unaware of it. Meanwhile, inside the dense forest, the cloaked maniac is stopped by Tilfar and Sheris, who are able to identify that the spy is from the Hyberg Republic. This is because of the letters that the maniac tried to send out to the Hyberg Republic, which contained secret information about the Academy. Moreover, the havoc created by the maniac at the Academy was all to deceive Lux. Therefore, Tilfar is able to identify the cloaked maniac as Sania. Realizing that her guess was right on the mark, Sania discards her disguise and reveals that she intends to kill everyone present at the island in order to destroy the Empire of Atismata. She summons her drag ride while a whistle sound enhances her abilities, which was something Tilfar and Sheris had never seen or heard of. Nearby, Hayes blows on the horn whistle that causes Sania's drag ride to enhance in power. 
Moreover, the Ragnarok, Poseidon, emerges from the ground, interrupting the duel between Lux and Celestia. As the other cadets run to safety, Eri notices that Philophy was missing. Inside the forest, Philophy begins to feel weak for some unknown reason. Luckily, Headmistress Rieri, who was Philophy's older sister, protects Philophy. Back at the beach, Celestia, against Lux's suggestions, uses her divine ability called Divine Gate, which allows her to teleport near Poseidon. She lands a blow successfully, only to find Sania and Hayes at the scene. As Hayes was cloaked, Lux mistakes Hayes for Fugil. Hayes uses her horn whistle that triggers Poseidon while Sania tries to strike Celestia but is stopped by Lux's wyvern. Sania heads away while Poseidon creates a black smoke screen. Hidden in the black smoke, Celestia confesses to Lux that she was responsible for his grandfather's death, which she was incredibly remorseful for. In the past, Celestia had caught wind of the corruption within the previous empire of Arcadia. She had then told this to Wade, Lux's grandfather, who then pointed the corrupt system out to the Arcadia Empire. For this act, he was executed, and his grandson, Lux, along with his daughter, Lux's mother, were banished. Celestia blames herself for not keeping a tight lip about the news of corruption that she had heard, hence causing many tragedies in Lux's life. Yet once again she felt responsible for roping Lux into fighting the Poseidon. Seeing her self-hatred, Lux comforts her and tells her that he does not resent her. Lux then exits from his wyvern and unsheathes his black sword device. Celestia realizes that the black sword device was Luno's, and Lux informs her that he was Luno all along, and hence will later accept any punishment for deceiving her. In the meantime, he decides to use the drag ride Bahama to finish off Poseidon. He swiftly cuts all of Poseidon's tentacles and makes quick work of it despite it being a Ragnarok. As it is defeated, Poseidon releases a crystal which Sania immediately takes away. She then picks up Hayes and floats nearby. As Hayes lifts her cloak, Lux realizes that he had mistaken Hayes for Fugil. Hayes vows to resuscitate the nightmare from five years ago, however Lux has no idea of what she meant. Seeing that he had forgotten, Hayes takes her leave along with Sania. As things calm down, Lux treated Celestia back at the camp. As they get on better terms, Celestia allows Lux entry into the Chivalric Order and lets him stay at the Academy. Later at night, Lux ponders about Hayes' words about the nightmare that had occurred on the island five years ago. Lux tries to remember anything related to it, but only recalls glimpses of injured people. All of a sudden, the ground begins to shake violently, so he heads out only to find everyone already outside. Seeing something enormous lift from the water, Headmistress Riri informs the students that one of the ruins was emerging in front of them, so she reveals her plans on heading inside the day after tomorrow. The next day, as preparations are being made to head into the ruin, Lux checks up on Philophy as she was feeling weak the previous day. He is reminded of a past memory where Regreed and Lux's older brother, Abel, had damaged a statue. The two had blamed Philophy for the damage, but Lux, who knew Philophy was innocent, took the blame in her stead. Philophy then thanked him for taking her side, and that's how they became close friends. In the present, Philophy wants to go to the ruin along with the other cadets. Despite Lux's concerns for her health, Philophy is adamant on going with the cadets. Leisha approaches Lux and takes him to her station, where she teaches Lux a new ability of the Bahamut called Over Limit. The technique rids the drag ride of its normal limiter, but also is a dangerous technique as entering the release code would also risk his life in the process. The next day, all of the cadets gather near the ruin. As Poseidon, the Ragnarok of the ruin was defeated, Riri speculates that the gate to the deepest layer of the ruin may have opened up. Eri explains that the ancient script written at the center of the ruin will draw all of them inside the ruin after a certain period of time. Following Ares' instructions, all of the cadets soon make it inside the ruin. Inside the desolate landscape, Nokuto tries to look for any abyss nearby. As they were on the first underground floor, Ares explains that the very ruin they are in goes on for 11 floors underground. The group starts surveying the area and soon reaches an area where plants were growing. By the looks of the area, Krulsifer speculates that something bad might have gone down, hence explaining the disrupted ecosystem in that place. With a vast area left to cover, Riri suggests that they split into teams. Krulsifer, Leisha and Sheris were given the task of surveying the fourth underground level, Tilfar, Riri and Philophy were given the fifth underground level and Lux, Eri and Nokuto took the sixth underground level. Eri entrusts Celestia with the third underground level as she was strong enough to do it alone. However, she was saddened by getting left out, so Lux suggested that he meet her halfway with his team. She is extremely satisfied by the suggestion, and hence agrees to follow Lux's plan. While Lux's team searches the sixth underground level, Nokuto is able to detect something on her radar. She is able to rule out the presence of an abyss hence she heads towards the site of the signal. Lux lifts the rubble at the area, and is able to find a girl lying underneath. The group is obviously surprised, hence they call for Krulsifer as she had some connection to the ruins. Believing that it was dangerous to stay close by, Krulsifer instructs Nokuto and Eri to head to Leisha's group. 
With only Lux by her side, Krulsifer proceeds to investigate the girl. She touches the girl's face, suddenly awakening her. The girl recognizes Krulsifer as the administrator of the ruin but seems to have no memory of the past hence she asks Krulsifer to repair her programming. Krulsifer does not remember being the administrator or anything, so the girl introduces herself as La Crush, the supervisor of the ruin. Moreover, she was an entity known as the Automaton. As she was an old era robot, Krulsifer asks La Crush if she had any records of the old eras but La Crush tells her that her memory has temporarily been lost because of sleeping for too long. Moreover, she tells Krulsifer that the functions of the ruin had been suspended. To regain the ruin's functions and her memory, La Crush informs Krulsifer that she would have to identify herself as the administrator in the control area room and then give the restore command. To share their findings, Lux and Krulsifer regroup with all the other cadet teams. Meeting the other groups, Lux notices that Philophy was once again getting weak. Krulsifer tells Lux that she was concerned by La Crush's statements as she referred to a creator that had even greater authority above the administrator. The administrator, according to La Crush, was Krulsifer herself hence suggesting that there is an owner that owns Krulsifer. With more places to investigate, Ari informs everyone that ahead of them on the seventh floor was the place called the production area. She suggests that all teams start their survey from the production area. Meanwhile, back at the Atismata castle, news of Regreed's prison escape had reached the four great nobles and the queen. Regreed Reed was now preparing his own rebel army, hence one of the nobles suggested that they use the help of Lux as he was a strong drag knight. Back at the ruin, Lux joins Philify's team as she was getting weak for some reason. The group reaches the production area only to see many capsules containing abyss. Philophy shrieks as she senses an abyss approaching them. Nearby, Hayes uses the horn whistle for the abyss to emerge. A Diablos attacks Lux, but Lux is able to defend himself after some struggle. According to La Crush, when the ruin enters a state of alert, it releases three abyss. Two of them emerge outside the ruin while one emerges inside. To protect the people at the island, Philophy and Lux head outside the ruin, leaving Riri to Tilfar's care inside the ruin. Seeing that Philophy knew where the abyss were, Lux questions her if she had been to the ruin before, but Philophy does not answer him. Reaching outside, Lux begins to remember the nightmare from five years ago. Suddenly, a Diablo smashes Philophy to the wall in front. Lux kills both of the Diablos and immediately rushes to Philophy's aid. However, he realizes that an underground area had opened up under the building where Philophy had crashed into. Lux heads down and begins to get glimpses of the past. He remembers the underground place being an area for human experimentation in the time of the old empire. He remembers coming here five years ago, but suddenly gets glimpses suggesting that Philphi was also brought here. However, Lux only remembers to have met Philophy recently after seven years to their first meeting but his memories tell him that she was here five years ago with him as well. Struggling to make sense of his memories, Lux finds Philophy nearby and rushes towards her only to realize that she was running a fever. Philophy tells him that an abyss was present in the room with them, and immediately holds Lux's neck, with eyes revealing that she was an abyss herself. At the brink of death, Lux gets a flashback to his first kiss with Philophy. He cries out Philophy's name, which causes Philophy to resist the abyss controlling her. As she lets go of Lux, Hayes makes her grand entrance. Back inside the ruin, the cadets successfully defeat the abyss. A duo of Krulsifer and Leisha handle one of the Diablos while the other cadets investigate the ruin. The other cadets find the door to the deepest part of the ruin, but they do not have the key to enter. Not knowing that Krulsifer is the key, Ari and the cadets try to find possible ways to enter inside. Meanwhile, at the human experimentation chambers, Lux brandishes his sword towards Hayes, who informs him that Philophy would die if he was reckless. Having previously warned Lux of her attempts to bring back the nightmare to the island, she reveals that she had placed the seed of her pet Ragnarok inside Philophy as a part of her plan. Inside Philophy's body, worms were eating her insides and making her turn into an abyss hence forcing her to be a faithful servant of the Ragnarok. Philophy was getting progressively weaker because she was trying to retain control of herself. Hayes then informs Lux about the command she had given to the Ragnarok, which was to kill him. As Philophy was bound to suffer and soon die by forcing herself against the Ragnarok's orders, Hayes strikes up a deal with Lux. In exchange for ordering the Ragnarok to save Philophy, Hayes wanted Lux to use Krulsifer to open the door leading to the deepest part of the ruin. As she was leaving, Lux asked who she was. Hayes tells him that she was related to him, pointing out their same hair color. After Hayes leaves, Lux immediately takes Philophy to the camp. Philophy is unable to remember anything from the moments prior to reaching the camp. Lux then spoon-feeds Philophy as she had gotten very weak. While spoon-feeding her, Lux is suddenly reminded of the abyss within Philophy as one of her eyes turns abyss-like. 
he heads outside the room, only to find Philippi's concerned sister Riri standing in the hallway. Lux tells Riri about Philippi who had been a subject of human experimentation at the island five years ago. Riri reveals that she knows that Lux had tried to help Philippi after she had been experimented on, but Philippi had died during that time. Right now, the Philippi that was present with them was a resurrected version of Philippi who was a hybrid abyss. Riri reveals that the reason she had brought everyone to the island in the first place was because she wanted to search the deepest parts of the ruins for a solution to save Philippi. Remembering that Philippi had helped him to get through the grief of his mother's passing, Lux decides to help Riri reach the deepest part of the ruin. Lux later meets with Leisha, who had repaired his Bahamut. While Leisha was away to ask Headmistress Riri permission for using the Bahamut's overdrive, Lux receives a call from Fugil. Fugil shares his annoyance with Hayes's use of the horn whistle. Knowing that Lux wanted to save Philippi, Fugil suggests that Lux break Hayes's horn whistle and also defeat the Ragnarok that is master of the seed controlling Philippi. Following the call, Lux heads to Philippi before his trip to the ruin. Philippi reveals that she knows about the abyss inside her. Lux holds her in a strong embrace and tells her about how grateful he is to be her friend. Hence, Lux vows to save her from the abyss that is trying to gain control of her. Heading to the ruins, Kralsifer, who is aware of the situation, agrees to open up the door for the deepest level of the ruin. Entering inside, the cadets believe something is off as the place was empty. La Crush, who had now suddenly regained her memory, declares the cadets her enemy and sides with Hayes. Having entered inside the deepest level, Hayes reveals that she had successfully tricked the cadets into opening the door for her, and revealed had brought Philophy in abyss form along with her, thus betraying the deal she had made with Lux earlier. Using the horn whistle, Hayes orders Abyss Philophy to attack the cadets while in her drag ride. Seeing Philophy follow Hayes' orders, all the cadets get into their drag rides. La Crush, having spare drag rides, sends the drag rides into autopilot mode against Lux. While fighting the drag rides with his Bahama, Lux comes to realize that the autopilot drag rides were abnormally fast hence meaning that they had the ability to use over limit. The cadets have a hard time restraining Abyss Philophy as her Divine Drag Rides ability, Missing Fate, cancelled the abilities of other Divine Drag Rides. Seeing her friends in trouble, Eri decides to act fast with the horn whistle that Miss Riri had previously given to Lux. Meanwhile, Hayes tries to use the crystal from Poseidon on the altar inside the level. However, before she could use it, she was interrupted by Fugil. She then suddenly hears a whistle despite not using her horn whistle. She rushes to the battle only to find Eri blowing on the horn whistle. Hayes tries to blow on the whistle as well but is stopped by Philophy. This is because Hayes's commands had weakened thus allowing Philophy to change back into her normal form. The cadets, now having the upper hand, order Hayes to surrender. Hayes, unwilling to give up, uses the power of her horn whistle to summon another Ragnarok. As the cadets open fire at the Ragnarok, the Ragnarok uses its branches to capture the cadets. Apparently, the Ragnarok's regeneration rate increased each time it was attacked. Seeing that the Ragnarok was way too strong, Lux asks Leisha for permission to use Bahamut's overdrive. Although initially hesitant because it was too risky, Leisha soon allows Lux to use overdrive because of the threat the Ragnarok posed. Lux heads into battle and cuts through the Ragnarok but is soon caught by the branches that were under its control. Leisha gives Lux the disarming code from her Tiamat, allowing Lux to use Overdrive. In Overdrive mode, Lux kills the Ragnarok at an outrageous speed, baffling Hayes who was sure of his victory. The ruin comes crashing down to the sea, so everyone evacuates. After the whole fiasco, Lux and the cadets head back to the camp. To return the favor from before, Philophy looks after Lux since he had used the Overlimit in battle. While chit-chatting with Lux, she reveals that she had grown resistant to the horn whistle because of the battle within the ruin. Lux is glad to hear that as Philophy's life was no longer in imminent danger. Philophy thanks Lux as he fulfilled his promise to save her despite the challenges. The next day, Lux headed to his academy only to be surprised by a party that was being held for feats. After their long stay at the island, Riri wants to celebrate their return back to the academy. However, she was scolded by higher-ups for her survey inside the ruin without their permission. She believes that she got off easily because they were more focused on the major event that was due to be held in the royal capital of Atasmata. It was the National Foundation event, hence marking five years since the Empire of Atasmata had been formed. As Leisha tries to make her move on Lux, Kralsifer invites Lux to a date. Leisha, who is baffled by Kralsifer's sheer audacity, soon learns that she had even more competition because Celestia and Philophy also wanted to go on a date with him. Before the girls would start World War III, Headmistress Riri suggests, 
that Lux makes the ultimate choice. Unable to choose from his harem collection, Lux decides to date the girls one by one tomorrow. The next day, Eri escorts Lux to his first date with Celestia. On their way, Eri tells Lux that there will be an all-dragon battle segment during the Foundation Festival. It will be a tournament where representatives from each country gather and compete for their right to survey the ruins. This time around, Lux and the Chivalric members would be representing their country. However, Eri is against Lux's participation in the tournament as he had just recovered from the battle and the ruin at Ray's Island. Before Lux meets with his date, Eri warns him that a strong drag knight, known as the Empire Assassin's Dagger, had reportedly escaped prison in the royal capital of Atismata. Eri speculates that the Escapi might be after Lux since he had defeated the Arcadia Empire. After the warning, she shows Lux his date, Celestia, who was dressed all cute. Sheris, Nokuto and Tilfar, who were the coordinators of Lux's dates, hand Lux a more formal and stylish set of clothes. They kick off their date by strolling around the stalls that were set up for the festival. After a while, Lux and Celestia rest near a fountain. Lux jokes about how Celestia had mistakenly drunk alcohol and was now feeling dizzy. Being thankful to Lux for taking her out, Celestia tries to shake Lux's hand but accidentally falls down pulling Lux along with her. Lux is luckily cushioned by Celestia's breasts and Tilfar jokes about Lux's naughty side. As his time with Celestia was up, Lux's date coordinators informed Lux about his next date with Krulsifer. Krulsifer had invited Lux to a ballroom full of nobles and drag knights that had gathered before the All-Dragon tournament. Krulsifer invites Lux to a dance. As Lux was a noob in dancing, Krulsifer tells him to follow her lead. At sunset, Krulsifer heads to the balcony where she laughs remembering Lux's awkward dance moves. Krulsifer then tells Lux that she had set up a date because Alterize was actually trying to check up on her. To still act like she was engaged with Lux, Krulsifer asks Lux for a pretend kiss. Lux complies with her request, and Tilfar is amazed by Krulsifer's buttery smooth skills. The date coordinators then take Lux to his next date with Philophy. As usual, Philophy wears clothes that might have shrunk years ago. Reaching the perfect date location, Philophy reveals that she had chosen a freaking church for a date. She then takes Lux inside the local church and lays him on her lap so he could rest from all the stress he had in his life. Because of a few obstacles in his way, Lux isn't able to lock eyes with Philophy and instead decides to sleep. After an hour's good sleep, Lux heads outside and meets up with Leisha, who is bitter over the fact that Lux did not choose her as a date partner. However, she does understand that Lux had a hard time choosing hence she lets him off the hook. She reveals that the reason she wanted to meet Lux was because of a favor she wanted from him. She then asks Lux to become her knight as, after her graduation, she will need an attendant to shoulder her increasing duties. Lux believes that his past relations with the old empire may complicate things for her, so Leisha tells him that, despite the complications, she wants to possibly introduce him along with herself to the nation on the last day of the Foundation Festival. After asking Lux to have an answer before the last day, Leisha bashfully runs away. The next day, Lux tells Eri about his participation in the All-Dragon Tournament. Harry calls him irresponsible and only allows him 12 minutes within the tournament because there were still threats lingering around. While listing the threats like Hayes and Regreed, Eri reminds him about the Empire Assassin's Dagger. As Lux was talking with Eri, they both are interrupted by the sudden appearance of Yoruka, who claims to be a former drag knight of the former Empire, and she now would take command from Lux as he was his supposed master. Since this was all to sudden, Lux tells her to await his orders in front Eri but as Eri left, Lux. Leisha is practicing her speech for the festival as Lux enters her room and they discuss Leisha's offer from the other day. Meanwhile, Hayes, Sanya and Yoruka are inside another ruin which they activate. Lux and Eri are then summoned by the nobles to discuss a plot by Regreed to overthrow the new kingdom which will take place after the drag ride tournament. Lux is ordered to act as a decoy to lure out over 100 abyss that are hiding in uninhabited villages near the kingdom with the promise of overlooking the Ray's Island incident. They also order Lux to win the upcoming tournament and he agrees to do both though Eri is against this. Upon returning to the academy, Lux asks Leisha to once again modify his wyvern drag ride but he spots Yoruka. He finds her and they talk about her reasons for serving him even though the Empire is no more. She explains that it is due to a promise she made with her deceased younger brother and she makes clear her intention to destroy the new kingdom and restore the Empire in order to fulfill her contract. When Lux still refuses to destroy the kingdom, Yoruka declares him her enemy and leaves. During the tournament, Lux wins his match but Krulsifer notices that Lux is rushing his victory unlike his normal strategy. After the match, Lux asks Eri to relay a message to everyone should he not return for the group battle tournament. Later, Leisha's own match begins and things proceed smoothly until Yoruka manipulates Leisha's drag ride and makes it attack the audience. Leisha is then imprisoned and her drag ride is confiscated. 
Meanwhile, Lux discovers Sania who unleashes the Abyss which he then lures to the kingdom's soldiers who destroy them. Keeping her promise to Lux, Eri reveals the operation to the girls who decide to try and find Yoruka and rescue Leisha. As Lux is resting, the insurgents, led by Regreed, attack and kill the remaining soldiers while the main force retreats. Back in the academy, the girls learn of the insurgents' attack and that they are advancing to the capital. Lux engages Regreed who reveals that a giant stone golem, piloted by Hayes, is approaching the capital and Lux is forced to use Bahamut despite knowing that he can only use it for 12 minutes. Lux continues to battle Regreed who severs Bahamut's arm only to learn that it was actually a wyvern disguised as Bahamut. Lux quickly defeats Regreed and his men and heads for the capital while making contact with Eri. Meanwhile, Leisha is visited by Sania who derides her and has one of her soldiers strip Leisha down as she is curious to see the Empire's brand below her stomach but Lux arrives in time to stop them. He convinces a depressed and guilty Leisha to help him fight. Hayes orders the New Kingdom to surrender or die but is attacked and temporarily subdued by Lux, Leisha, Krulsifer and Fi. Lux asks the latter two to destroy the remaining Abyss and insurgents while he and Leisha destroy the giant. They are then met by Hayes in her own divine drag ride who splits the city in two with a single attack. Meanwhile, Seals confronts Sania who was threatening the nobles. While Lux looks for a way inside the giant, Leisha fights Hayes alone but is clearly outmatched. As Lux finds an entrance, he is confronted by Yoruka who intends to revive the Empire under Eri instead as Lux still refuses to reconsider her offer. Lux again questions her reasons for reviving the Empire and she finally tells him the full story. Yoruka was a princess while her twin brother was the young ruler of their kingdom after their father died of an illness. In exchange for Yoruka's cooperation with the Empire, her brother would be spared but while she was away, her brother was killed by the nobles of their kingdom as a peace offering when they decided to put the blame on him after they surrendered to the Empire. Yoruka kills the nobles in revenge but decides to honor her contract to the Empire believing it was her fate. Lux, however, compares her to Leisha who is trying her best despite her unwilling position as the kingdom's princess. They continue to battle and Lux eventually wins by taking advantage of Yoruka's brief distraction when he mentioned her brother in a speech. Lux explains that he wished to change the country for the better but he failed. In order for him to accomplish this, he had to destroy the Empire first and rebuild it from the ground up thus making Yoruka understand that everything Lux had done was for the Empire. Seals defeats Sania but the giant recovers and prepares to attack the capital but Yoruka, who decided to serve Lux again, betrays Hayes and destroys the giant's controls at the last second. Infuriated, Hayes tries to destroy the capital alone but is finally defeated by Lux. At the end of the festival, Leisha makes her speech and announces Lux as her knight to the public who give their approval. During the party, Lux sees Fugil who is holding what appears to be Bahamut's sword device then quietly walks away. Lux is then greeted by the girls, including Yoruka, who openly flirts with him and an angry Leisha demands that Lux declares which girl he loves. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you never miss a future video. And until next time guys, take care.